So uh, I actually started the event, and I am wrapping up the event for all of you. And we started off with a lot more inspiration about creativity. That's kind of how I treated my WPPI, because I want to give you ideas for tips and tricks to get you out there so that you're creative, that you experiment, that you go home and shoot. Because if you do this whole thing, you learn stuff, and then you go home and do nothing with it. You just wasted time and money. So you better be planning your shoots on your calendar right now. But I covered a lot of creativity, and now I actually want to talk a little bit about business and success, but not being boring about it, hopefully. Uh, what I want to talk about is crafting your career. What I mean by that is that people all the time will ask me, what's your big break? Like, what was it that was your big opportunity? Or they say, you know, well, what, what was the secret to get to, you know, where you are? Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Uh, there is no big break. It's many little steps along the way and constant effort. But when you say that, and I say I've been in business for 20 years, well, then it's like, well, hell no, I don't have 20 years. Like, I'm in a hurry. So what I'm hoping to do is move things along a little faster for you and just give you the quick tips, kind of the, the cliff notes of what I found useful in having a purposeful, crafted career. Because here's what happens. I think most of us, probably, we begin as photographers by accident. Like, hey, I like photography. Oh, will you, you know, shoot the, you know, shoot some portraits of my child? Will you uh, photograph this event, right? So what happens is you start there, people asking for favors, usually, and then you get confident enough to start asking for a little bit money, and then maybe you ask for a little bit more, and like it, it just kind of grows like that. But the problem is that is not purposeful. That's just like, I'll do whatever comes my way. But I am really proud to say that today, the type of work that I get paid to shoot is stuff that most of the time I would shoot for free because it's fun. But that was very purposeful in its action. So I want to show you how to do that. Because if you're shooting and you're bored and you don't like the work you're shooting, don't be a photographer. Like there are better ways to make money and to enjoy life. So let's talk about being purposeful. So that's really what happens, though. When you start on accident, you're not shooting things you enjoy. You don't charge enough. You uh, are stuck in your day job because you haven't figured out how to, how to charge enough. So we're going to talk about strategy. So. My encouragement to all of you is to try to please do this. Try to make a pledge to not be the accidental photographer. Give yourself time to actually make purposeful decisions. So remember how I told you to go plan your shoots, right? Next part of this, plan your marketing and success. Every single month on my calendar, you, you'll see on it, there are two creative shoot days. Like, March 1st, I already know where my calendar is for those two shoot days to get creative. But I also have two marketing and planning days. Because what happens is if you don't schedule them, next thing you know, it's May, June, July. <laughs> like, it's, it's the end of the year. And then what we do is we make New Year's resolutions, and then we wait to the next year to look at them. It doesn't work like that. you got to follow up and do marketing and planning every single month. So we're going to be purposeful photographers together. So I wanted to start off with what some of my early work looked like. And I'm, if you saw the presentation last night, you might have seen a couple clips of some of my early like bad work. This is early decent work. It's correctly exposed. It's nicely lit. And this is the type of work that was coming my way. Uh, I uh, had a portrait studio in upstate New York, a small town near, if you guys ever heard of Binghamton, there's a college there, a university. Uh, so I grew up in a small town outside of there. And so I would shoot whatever came my way, which was a lot of high school seniors and graduations and babies. But I'd mention this also, um, I hate photographing babies. Uh, but what would happen is someone's like, oh yeah, I have a kid and I will pay you to shoot them. So I'd shoot it because yes, money, I can pay for that camera, I can pay for that lens, I can pay for that tool. And so then I would shoot that and I'd put it in my portfolio on my little website. And then someone else with a baby would see it and go, oh, you shoot babies? Great, photograph my baby. And I would do that and put it up on my little website. Well, fast forward, what's my website? The entire thing is babies. And I like, really, I really don't like photographing babies. Okay, I'm bad at it and they're a mess. And it, 
But that was all I was getting paid to do because I wasn't doing it purposefully. I wasn't shooting the type of work I want to be hired for. Uh, the work that I shoot now, the work that I get paid to do are things like this, which like it, it just feels good. I'm proud of my work. I enjoy my work and I can get paid well for the work that I would probably just do for free. So to give you an idea, um, I say this to be helpful. I don't say this so that you feel like I'm bragging about money. It's not that at all. I just want you to take a look. My first portrait order form, uh, I had, I believe it's one eight by 10, two five by sevens, four wallets. The retouching and the session was $59, which is terrible. Don't do that. I'm just showing you. Uh, now my sessions start at 3,200. And that took place, if you look at the, the timestamps on there, over a 10 year time period. And I was able to get to that point. So I wanna kind of pass that on to you. We're going to talk about my price sheets a little bit. So you will see that again in the future. So here's what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about being deliberate, right? Being a purposeful photographer, uh, shooting what you wanna be hired for. We're going to talk about finding a style and a voice because that's what takes you from being a good photographer to a great photographer. So we'll talk about that a little bit. We're also going to talk about valuing your time, your artwork, like knowing your worth and, and being able to be paid for your worth. And then lastly, having a strategy and analyzing, like is what you're doing actually working? Because we're artists, so we like to make pretty photos and then we never look at like, hey, that little Facebook ad I spent money to put up, did it work? Could it be better? Like you have to actually analyze these things. So let's jump in. But before I do that, I have a whole bunch of information uh, in this PDF. And if you would like it, it's right here for free for all of you. So I know that I talk quickly and I mention a lot and the slides are small up on the screen. So this is a PDF of exactly what I'm saying this whole time. So I'll leave it up for one more second. Great. Okay. And, 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 okay, perfect. Next one. All right, so let's talk about being deliberate. First and foremost, you know the saying, you can't figure out your path and your journey if you don't know where you're going. So what is it that you want your career to look like? I was talking to you before and I wanted to know like what, what is it that you eventually want to do? What would you like to be paid to do? Now in the beginning, I recommend you try a little bit of everything and see what speaks to you. But you've all heard this. If you are the everything photographer, it is really hard and wasteful for marketing and networking and all of that stuff because your target audience is on this platform and it's in this magazine or on this advertisement. It like everybody's spread out. And so the little resources you have get doled out and it's not as effective. Uh, do you know, it used to be that to make an impact for someone to actually remember your brand, you had to have eight touch points. We heard that saying, so it basically means at some point, in order for them to actually hire you as a photographer or purchase your brand or whatever it may be, you have to have made an imprint on them eight times. Maybe that was a Facebook ad, uh, an ad in a magazine, they've heard your name, you've been at uh, a wedding show, whatever it may be. Those numbers they think are going way up because in social media, if they see your brand once, it just goes over there. They miss it, right? Because you're looking for a quarter of a second. They say now it's more like 27, <laughs> like 27 times someone needs to interact with your brand before they actually choose you. So you can't be the everything photographer because that target audience, that one person you're trying to reach, how are you going to get to them 27 times? Put them all in one pool and try to reach that pool 27 times. Otherwise it, it's just, it's honestly just not doable. So you have to figure out what success looks like for you and who your target audience is. We're gonna revisit that. But here's the thing. This is a wedding and portrait photographer conference. Uh, and so a lot of us are aspiring professionals, but I also want you to know it's okay to not be a full-time wedding photographer or portrait photographer. Like what, what are you trying to get out of photography? It is fine to do it because you love it and you don't have to make a living out of it. So you have to figure out, are you looking for uh, something out of photography that's just personal fulfillment? Are you trying to make a living out of it? Like really reflect on that. It doesn't have to be your job. All right, so you gotta take a look. Where do you wanna be to figure out how to get there? Um, all the time people ask me, 
how I do so much, how I, I get so far, um, it's because I, I just do it. Like I make a plan and do it rather than thinking about it, which I, I honestly would venture to say that a majority of the people that feel struggling to not get to where they want to be, I bet you 90% of you, it's because you just think about it instead of just doing it. Someone else is doing it, so it might as well be you. All right, so here's what you want to be deliberate with. My first tip was to be deliberate. You want to be deliberate with your pricing, your marketing, your customers, and your budget. I'm going to explain what this means, but, and again, it's in that PDF, so this is all spelled out for you. But first and foremost, this is a lot of words, which is why there's the PDF. Um, pricing. Don't negotiate. Actually have prices and have them mean something. Be able to explain where they came from. Explain what someone's getting for a certain price. One of the questions, which you'll see later, is you have to figure out how much you need to charge to, even, to just even get to break even, right? So you're not losing money from your career or your hobby. Um, there's actually calculators online that are free. I'll put this up later. That allows you to put in uh, what your expenses are, how much your gear was, um, insurance that you have to have. You can plug these in and it tells you, all right, how many shoots are you aiming to do a month? I'm trying to do four. Well, in those four shoots, you need to make this money minimum in order to not be losing it. I feel like most of us don't look at those things. It's super important to be able to stay in business. So the pricing, you have to figure out uh, what you need to charge, how much you should charge for your target audience. If you are charging nothing, the people that have a lot of money ignore you because they assume less money, like less cost means less value, right? So there's considerations like that too, so you have to know your target audience. Second one is customers. We'll also look at this. But there's this thing with marketing. When you are, in, are trying to target a customer, you're supposed to envision them as one person. Like actually put a name and a face and a description and a personality to your ideal client. So who are they? What kind of message do they respond to? Like if you were, if you're my target client, how would I interact with you? Because I've already figured out your personality a little bit. I know what you like, what your hobbies are, what you read. So when I'm creating my messaging, I'm doing it to you. And then it's actually personalized. People actually connect with it. So that's why you can't have a target audience that's everybody and everything, because then my message won't hit home. It won't actually reach people. What people connect with nowadays in social media is that personalized touch. Otherwise, it's just noise. So you really have to figure out who that customer is. And we're going to talk about uh, something called a customer avatar or a customer profile. We'll get back to that as well. Um, budgeting, by the way, most people don't realize you're supposed to spend like 20% of your budget on marketing and advertising. And I think we spend 90% uh, of our budget on gear. <laughs> and so, right, so you have to keep that in mind as well. And then also your creative decisions. The type of work that you shoot should be purposeful. So I just want to give you an insight into how I'm deliberate with my marketing. So I'm a portrait beauty fashion photographer. I really focus on fashion and beauty. Like that's my specialty. When I shoot portraits, it's because people are hiring me to photograph them that looks like a fashion editorial, right? Um, what I do every single January is I sit down and I make a list of my top 50 dream clients. Because 50 is a lot, but it's not impossible. But if I pick like 10, I might be cutting too many people out. Like I aim for 50. And in that dream client list, I'm trying to make a list of people that I think my style suits. Maybe some of the companies need me. Like I look at their photos and they're, they're bad. <laughs> and so I know, okay, I'm gonna market to them in a certain way. And then maybe there's these dream clients up here and I'll think, okay, they already have great images. They're already working with exclusive photographers. How do I get to them? It's probably making a connection with an individual that recommends me. So I make the, that dream client list at the beginning of every January. And then in June, we revisit it. And maybe I've changed my mind, cut some people out. So we'll, we'll take a look at this. All right, so this is what I was mentioning. Remember how I said you need to be deliberate with your customers, with your clients? Um, this is something called a customer profile or a customer avatar. You should actually do this genuinely. It will be helpful. What you do is you fill it out and it has uh, that individual. Where do they shop? organizations they belong to, maybe social media platforms they're on, because then you know how to get in front of them. 
It talks about goals and values. This is the, well, I met you and I figure out your personality. So that's how you figure out what's important to them and how do you have a conversation with them. So you can search customer profile or avatar online and find it for free. But when you're thinking of your different target audiences, those, those people um, don't have more than three. Like I know some people are gonna be like, okay, well I do weddings and I do boudoir, right? Like three, you're not gonna be able to handle more than that and actually market effectively. So try this at home, narrow down your target audience, your individuals to three people or less. All right, so first thing is be deliberate. Like remember, it's pricing and it's your budget and it's your target audience, what you shoot. And then you need to shoot what you wanna be hired for because if somebody looks at your portfolio and it's only babies, they think you only do babies. So what this means is typically you do have to analyze what you want to shoot, right? Like what, 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 uh, who's my target client? Oh, I wanna shoot beauty, I wanna shoot uh, athletes. And so this was not deliberate for me, right? So what I do is every month, I have uh, those two days of creative shoots, and on those days, I don't get paid a dime. So what I do is it's usually, you know, it's usually a two Tuesdays in a month. And on those days, I will shoot from 8.30 in the morning to 6.30 at night as much as I can. And the work is me experimenting, and I'm learning new lighting techniques, or I'm trying new makeup. But the entire time, I'm always keeping in mind, what images can I shoot that would attract my dream clients. So how that extends to you is if you'd like to do weddings and, and engagement sessions that are more stylized, but you're not getting asked to do those, well, on those days, reach out to previous brides or uh, potential models in the area. Put together fake shoots because eventually they won't be fake. Eventually, people will actually ask you to shoot them. But if they don't see exactly that, people aren't creative. They want to see, yes, I know you can do this type of lighting in this type of location, this type of feel that I like. So you have to do creative play days. And just to give you an idea of how it's worked for me, the picture on the left was a play day, just fun. And then the, this, she's a, a singer, uh, kind of a, a rock singer. Um, and she said, that picture on the left, do that for me. Right? Like, they don't think outside of the box. The people are, tend to be quite literal. Here's another example. The picture on the left was a play day. It was a fun day. The picture on the right, it was uh, an ad, uh, ad for Haagen-Dazs Mooncakes in Shanghai. Just to give you an idea, picture on the left uh, paid me zero dollars. Honestly, it probably that day cost me, probably cost me three, four hundred dollars because it's food and retouching and studio and all that stuff. The picture on the right, the model alone for that one image made twenty thousand dollars. So that's why, like. You, ha you have to have the play days so you get hired to shoot the type of work you want to be paid to do. Uh, when it comes to portraits, the picture on the left was the type of portraits I used to do. Basically, they just they showed up and I slapped a light on them, right? And now I try to create images and portraits that are conceptual and tell stories. So uh, this was an engagement shoot over here. The girl is a professional dancer and he's an actor, right? So the image is saying something about them. I would shoot a lot of these type of storytelling portraits before people actually hired me to shoot those. Just more examples. Got to shoot the type of work you want to be hired for. I can show you endlessly. So my point is, my work didn't start good, and it didn't start being the way that I would like to shoot. I had to develop that. I think this one's particularly inspired. Um, the hair light on the gentleman probably could have been improved. Uh, the tie was a great styling choice on my part, right? Okay. So these are all just the type of work that I get paid to do now. All right, so here's the deal. So I'm telling you, you need to do your creative play days. You need to figure out who your target audience is, create images that are geared toward that target audience that you would actually enjoy shooting. But I'm telling you to shoot for free. Okay, it's a shoot for free but, or shoot for free when because you do need to have value and charge for your work. Here's the deal. Exposure means shoot for me for free because we're important, but you aren't. Like if someone says that to you, do the shoot for me, it's exposure. That is just like, <laughs> you need us. Like that's, that's what they're saying. They're not valuing me. So instead, here's how I approach it. I will shoot for free 
if it's my portfolio is really truly benefiting towards the type of work I want to be hired for. Not like, hey, shoot my event so you can put a, some event photos up on your website so that people know I can shoot events. Like it has to be the dream client, the target client. It really helps my portfolio. Uh, the other part is maybe uh, working with this particular client. Uh, they're putting together a big production. They don't have a ton of money to pay you, but you know the images are going to be great. Like, that might be useful. Uh, also know if they don't pay you in the beginning, they'll never pay you. Like a lot of people think, okay, great. Um, I'll get my foot in the door with these people. I'll do this first shoot for free. And then maybe later on they'll pay me. I've never had it happen once ever where it turned into a paying job because now they value you at zero. So they'll, they're going to, when they have a budget, they're going to pick someone else because they're like, oh, now we can afford a real photographer that actually gets paid. Uh, so. So all this time, I keep talking about shooting the type of images you want to be hired for, being deliberate. But part of that is really important to know about style and vision. All right, so I can speak to this emotionally from a personal standpoint, is I didn't want to have a style because I felt like I'd be excluding potential clients. Like if I had a particular look and feel that was recognizable, well, if someone didn't like that look and feel, then they wouldn't hire me and then I'm losing money. That was what I was worried about. And it's true-ish, okay? So let me explain it to you. All right, so um, I will give you my little anecdote. This is why I said the, the emotional story. Uh, so I went to college uh, for photography, but also business. That was actually the important reason for college. I wanted to learn how to run a business, be an entrepreneur. And I also took photography classes. So you know how expensive college is. And I got out and just out of college, uh, I had this magazine reach out to me. I think I had emailed them some promo materials at some point or like said, hey, I'd love to work with you. And so they emailed me and they said, hey, we'd love you to come in. And so I had studied abroad in London. So I was in London when this happened. And I honestly, I think it was like a month out of college and this magazine email was me and I was, you know, post-college big ego. I was like, oh yeah, all right, this is my in. They're already calling me, this is great. And so I go to this meeting and I bring my portfolio and I sit down with the, the, the editor of this magazine. And he looks through the whole portfolio, which they do a lot of times, they kind of want to see the whole body of work before chatting. So flips to the whole portfolio and then he closes it and he passes it back to me and he like crosses his arms and he sits back in the chair and he goes, I would start again. And I was like, I was very not in that place. I was like, oh, you want to look again here? And I like pass it back to him and he, no, 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 I would, I would start your portfolio over again. So keep in mind. Uh, I had just paid for college. I had built my like senior portfolio. I'd put a ton of time into it. I'd been shooting for like eight years prior to that. And he told me every photo was worthless. So I thankfully was able to hold off crying until I left. Like I cried the second I walked out the door, but I held it together there. And I asked him why, like, what, what, what do you mean? What do you, and he said, I look at your images and they're, they're well lit. It's fine, but you're a professional photographer. They should be. The posing is decent. Yeah, no, also it should be. And I meet with 10, 12 photographers, you know, a week. The second you walk out the door, I'm going to forget you. So basically it was a waste of time. Um, by the way, this guy was a jerk, but just because he was a jerk doesn't mean he didn't have some truth in there. It's kind of brutal because you just want to hate that person, but there's not wrong. And so what I realized is he said, think about the most successful fashion photographers, the most successful photographers. When you see a photo taken by them, you know it's them. He goes, I look at this and you're, it's all over the place. It's completely forgettable. So what style really becomes important for is so that you are memorable. And when someone wants that look, that feel, that style, they can only hire you because it's your style and vision, which means you can charge more because you're the only person who can do that, right? It takes time. It takes some, um, I would say, emotional discipline because you want to go everywhere, but you really need to kind of curate a vision, a look, and a feel. So 
Here's my tip uh, for finding your own style. Right now, take a look at the work you are most proud of and pick three images. So if I told you right now, you had to pick three photos that are the type of work you want to be paid for that you're most proud of, and you put them up on the screen in front of everybody. You can't say anything. When you look at those photos, what do they have in common? And I actually encourage you to actually do this exercise. Like, pick those three images. What do they have in common for subject matter? Like, what, what did you shoot? How did you feel when you shot them? What was inspiring you? Was it the, the environment that was inspiring you? Was there a similar color palette, like similar storytelling? What was it? And that'll give you an idea of your individual voice. If you are new to photography, don't do that yet because you need to shoot a lot. You need to shoot a lot and experiment until you really find what sings to you. So when I did this experiment, when after meeting the really mean editor, um, I, like, he was right. And so I took a look at my work and I said, all right, if I had to focus and I had to figure out what my specialty is, what images would I sh show? What images would I choose? And I found that all the images that I felt most attracted to were clean, bold, graphic, colorful, high contrast. But in my book, I had soft and dreamy and ethereal and it, like it didn't, it didn't fit together. And so what I did is I gave myself assignments so that twice a month or every single week, I would go and shoot images that were clean, bold, graphic towards my target audience. Uh, you do have to be purposeful and try to analyze it a bit. So um, if you are thinking about the idea of style, usually what's, well, style really, it's the common threads that weave throughout a photographer's work. And there's usually three words to describe it. So like, you know, when I look at a, a Joel Grimes photo, I always know Joel's photos. Like I can tell before I, I even uh, look at the, the name. Typically, for a photographer, these three things are, first one is subject matter, right? You know the person that they're a wedding photographer, they're a maternity photographer. Um, also know if you are in a small town and you need to shoot more than just one thing, you could be uh, a relationships photographer, so you shoot couples, weddings, and families. You're capturing relationships. Like, you can go broader than that. Uh, so it's subject matter is first. Next is there's usually something emotional to the photographs. So are they joyful, youthful, upbeat? Are they mysterious and sensual, right? You, usually that weaves throughout the photographer's work. And then the last part of that is usually some sort of visual style when it comes to color palette. They're uh, colorful, it's dark, it's dramatic. It's, it's really the, the visual elements. So just to show you examples, um, this photographer is one of my best friends. And her style, I asked her to describe it. It's fine art. That's a subject matter. It's dark. That's the visual element, but also emotional, because she's got some weird, creepy stuff. Uh, I always describe her as the weirdest normal person I know, or the most normal weird person. I think it's probably the most normal weird person, because deep down she's weird, but she passes off as normal. This is one of my best friends. Uh, her style is very painterly. And it's very whimsical, meaning it's always somewhat dreamlike. So when you see an image taken by Brooke, you instantly know that it was taken by her because it's those common threads that were weave throughout. And the same thing, it's another photographer. I put this up here because he's my boyfriend, OK? Uh, but if you look, it's all painterly. It's all timeless. All these are lit differently. The color palette is different. Same thing with me. You take a look at these images, clean, bold, graphic, strong. Each one of these was a different uh, location, a different shoot day, a different color, a different model. Some are beauty, some are fashion. But it's all seen by a or shot by a photographer who sees the world in a particular way. If, and I don't take this out of context, I'm not saying I'm great, but you can't be great without a style. You can be really good. You can be a good technical photographer, able to create beautiful images, but you're not ever going to get too memorable, right? You have to work on having a style. Uh, just to give you an idea, so let's say right now uh, I gave you all an assignment to shoot the concept of religion. For whatever, whatever you shoot, so maybe you shoot weddings, and so it would be something in a church, and you're capturing a certain part of the ceremony. Uh, maybe you are a portrait photographer, and then you choose to photograph uh, a priest, whatever it may be. Well, when someone says religion to me, 
because I have a style, I already know how I'm going to shoot it. It makes it easier for you to be creative when you have a look and feel. So for example, uh, I shoot clean, bold, and graphic. So if I'm going to shoot religion, it's going to be, uh, instead of a religious, uh, like looking at the old paintings, instead of a religious headpiece, it's going to be a fashion religion headpiece, maybe a, a big crown. Uh, I shoot colorful. So let's go with bold colors. Maybe I do red. This was my inspiration for how I'd shoot religion. Uh, and so I went online and I said, well, I don't have access to a headpiece. So let me grab a mirror. And I'm regularly buying, I, I can't tell you how many of these I have. <laughs> I just went to a Crate and Barrel, an outlet store, and I bought like four mirrors for the wall. Uh, but that's because I can use it for something like this. So how you would shoot the concept of religion when I said those words, probably totally different than me. But if you see this shot, I hope you know I, I took it. So that's, that is what you should creatively eventually be working for. You have a look a style, a way that you interpret the world that's different because then you're not competing based on price. You are competing because someone wants what you shoot. Someone wants how you see the world. All right, let me pop through these. Okay. Um, also want to show you, just because probably most of you aren't fashion photographers, I did want to show you what my portrait photography looks like. My style also transfers over to that. So this girl, uh, she's a ballerina with the uh, Seattle Ballet. Clean, bold, graphic, colorful, it, it transfers over. But if you want this type of portrait, you kind of got to hire me to do it, right? Because it's that look and feel. By the way, this is just shot with one light. All it is, it's a soft box on the right-hand side. Uh, I actually made the dress. It's not because I know how to make the dress. We took a piece of fabric and tied it around her waist. And then I took big pieces of tulle and cut it, and then we just tucked it in. So basically, it's just strips of fabric. And then when I had her jump, we took something called holy powder, the H-O-L-I, that they do in color runs. I bought a big pack on Amazon. I think I bought like $30 worth of it. And so when she'd jump, we'd throw it. But unfortunately, my assistants that were throwing it, uh, I think it was jump number three or four, they missed and just... So thankfully, this was shot number two. I literally got like two shots out of this shoot. This is how I shoot maternity. If you hate this shot and you're a maternity photographer, totally fine. I, but if you want soft and dreamy and flowers, there's a million other photographers that do that. But if you want this, you've got to hire me. Get what I'm saying? That was a family shoot that I did, Game of Thrones. Just giving you an idea of how it transfers over to portraits. So. The key is, there is no such thing as a right or wrong style. It's all about appealing to your target audience. On social media, what happens is when you first post your images, you are attracting a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you're going to get people that don't like what you do, and they're going to comment, and they're going to be mean, and they're going to be terrible. But eventually, if you have a style and you consistently post, people are there because they like that style, and you get a lot of love and a lot of support because they're there looking for what you create because only you do that. So I get tons of support on social and those who don't support me when they're mean, they get blocked and you delete it right away. You got to do it. Just trust me. Okay. So what we're doing is we're starting off and we're being really deliberate about uh, what we're doing in our career. Where do we want to go? Where do we want to be? And then we're moving into finding a style, but then Eventually, you're going to have to charge for what you do. And most of the time in the beginning, when someone asks you to shoot, you feel honored. Like, thank you for letting me, like, I'm, I appreciate you letting me photograph your, your wedding. It's a special day. And so then people are like, sure, I'll do it for $200 or $400. And it's a whole other conversation about that being damaging to the industry because those people might actually be pretty good. They just don't value themselves enough. So we got to talk about that for a moment, how to like actually charge for your work. And when they see that you're not charging for their work, they're never going to respect you. Uh, by the way, who's had this experience? The people that you give the deal, you give the discounts that are cheapest are the most difficult and most demanding, 100% of the time. Like anytime I do a favor for somebody, they give me hell. But the people that I give them a huge price tag, they're glorious most of the time. So just Keep that in mind. I promise you this happens. So 
the big question is, I'm telling you, you have to value your work and you, you have to have your prices set, but how do you figure out what the heck you charge? So absolutely, I recommend you go to that website, nppa.org forward slash calculator, okay? Um, I was lucky enough that I interned uh, as a student for the photographer who wrote best business practices for photographers. So it was a pretty good decision on my part. And I recommend his book. It helps, helps you think like a like someone who's actually running a business rather than just being an artist. And so check it out. His name is John Harrington. But on this website that's completely, completely free, here's the type of questions it's asking you. How much does your office or studio space cost you a month if you have one? How much are you spending on your photo gear, your equipment? How about your computer, your web hosting, your website? How about office supplies, your printer, your paper and ink? How much is that costing you? How about education, personal development? How much are you spending to learn and become a better photographer? How about health insurance and taxes and utilities and your phone and your vehicle and your post-it? It asks you all of these things that you're like, oh, crap. I didn't, even, I didn't even think about the fact that the internet is actually a business expense or whatever it may be. You fill this all out, and then you say at the end that the type of money you need to make to just survive, like literally just to pay your bills and keep the lights on. And what it does is it calculates out your total annual expenses, your weekly cost of doing business, and over co overhead cost for each assignment day based on the number of days of, of month you want to shoot. So I put plug these in, and it says, oh, man, I'm, I'm making four, 450 a shoot on average right now, and my break even to stay alive is 900 right? You'll be surprised, but it'll give you an idea of what you really need to be making and charging. So um, when somebody talks to you about price, I always start the conversation of first what they get before I get to what it costs. So if you hire me for a portrait shoot, which any of you, of course, can do, what you do is I send out, it's not a price sheet, it's an investment guide. And the prices are at the very, very end. In the front, the first thing I talk about is a bio. Uh, and it makes me sound really awesome, so start there. Uh, but then after that, I talk about my, my brand message, my artist vision, why I'm a photographer, why I love what I do, a little bit about me. Because remember how I said personal connection? And people choose photographers because they feel like, you know, we, we would have a, a connection. Like, we would have... Uh, a very fun wedding day or whatever it may be. Uh, so the next thing in from that is what is included in this shoot? What does a shoot look like? We talk about the goals of your shoot. What are you hiring me for? Uh, your brand colors. We're talking about wardrobe and hair and makeup. I'm talking about the entire experience. It's a four to six hour shoot with hair and makeup. Uh, it includes a certain number of images. So I spell it out and explain everything they're getting and then the price. So talk about it for terms of value. And then when you say price, I, you, you, get, you don't get pushback on things. If somebody is trying to negotiate, you know, just say, I always try and upsell. Like, oh, okay, well, what I can do for you is I can provide an extra image. Or we can do an extra hair and makeup look. Things that don't actually cost me extra money if I want them to feel like they have more value. But as soon as you discount, they're going to see how low you can go. It always happens that way. All right, so value proposition means basically if someone's going to hire you. What makes you attractive to that customer? It should never be because I'm cheaper or you're screwed forever. <laughs> it should always be you are creating something for them that's going to be timeless, that's going to be valuable. But everyone's going to be different. So here's examples of value propositions. First one would be, we capture your family's most precious moments. So what you're doing is you're capturing moments, not snapping the camera, because they can do that with an iPhone, right? Something like that. Here's another one. Um, I hope you look and feel like a model on your senior portrait, right? So that's giving them an aspirational goal that you're helping them to reach. It's not, hey, we shoot your, your senior portraits. I'm helping you look and feel a way that you would like to. Next one would be, your brand is important. We help you to craft visuals to help you grow your brand. That could be maybe personal branding for someone who's a lawyer or a dentist or a consultant. 
if they establish their brand through visuals, it brings them more money. It helps their brand grow. So working with you makes them more money in the end. Another one would be exquisite photography, compelling vis visuals, all the visuals you need in, uh, in one place. So in other words, instead of saying, hey, we do photo and video, it's just you come to one place, we produce all your content. So real quick, this is what my price guide looks like. And in that PDF in the beginning, I have this price guide, so you'll be able to see it. So it starts off on the left, a bio about me. On the right, my personal message as a photographer. Then my investment guide gives you the image goals. We start off, why are you here? Uh, I learn about your bio. We build a mood board of inspiration. I talk about color palette, wardrobe, what you want the wardrobe to convey about you. We always have hair and makeup. I walk you through the shoot day. Like You get there, we start with hair and makeup. Uh, I talk about how long it will take where it's going to be, and then after the shoot, how I walk you through picking those images. So I answer most of the questions people have up front. So they're saying, oh, okay, I'm getting a ton here before we switch over to price. Okay, so the very last part of all of this being deliberate is to having a strategy and analyzing it. And I find this quote very, very pertinent. The person who doesn't know where their next dollar is coming from usually doesn't know where the last dollar went. We photographers don't actually look at the money going in and out and like how much we spent on education, how much we spent on gear. Because it's, it's easier just to look at the bank account and see like, is there enough? But it, it doesn't work like that. You really do have to pay attention to where things are going. So let's talk about this. All right, so strategy. Here's what you should be doing after this event. There's kind of three areas of strategy that I recommend you spend time on. So first is that you build a strategy around building your portfolio for your dream client. We already talked about that, right? My strategy is that you pick two days a month, shoot those dream client target uh, ideal images. But number two, uh, brand partnerships. So no matter what you are doing, I don't care what you're shooting, there's another company out there in your community that is trying to target your same target audience. So like if you shoot babies, there's probably a clothing store or, or uh, a daycare or somebody that already has your target audience or is already targeting them. For weddings, if you shoot weddings, it would be event planners. You, what you can do is you can team up with these brands because probably they're already spending a bunch of money to market and to gather this target audience. So then you just step in and you share. And it saves you a ton of money. I found out that most of my most successful business opportunities came from that. Figuring out who already has my target audience and then just becoming friends, building a relationship. There's a million different ways to do this. And then the last thing you should work on for strategy would be social media. Um, nowadays, a lot of times, I know people don't go to my website first. They go to my Instagram first. And this may change. It may be different platforms in the future. You have to figure out what, who, where your target audience, since we did that avatar early on, you made the list, what social platforms are they actually on and spend your time there. Because maybe if you are photographing high school seniors, maybe, like, I, I don't do this. Maybe it's TikTok now. Like, maybe you do need to have TikTok. And you're like, wait, what the hell do I do on TikTok? Like, encourage the seniors that you're photographing to do something during their session. Shoot behind the scenes in that style. TikTok is not my specialty. My, me, it's all about Instagram. But your target audience might be a little older or they might be more active on Facebook. That might be their platform. So you have to actually ask those questions. So I want to show you, just so you see what this looks like for me, uh, how I build my strategies. And let's take a look. Okay, this is real life, not made up for an example, what I actually do to grow my business. So in uh, end of 2017, I laid my portfolio out on the ground. This is why I think print is so important. I laid my portfolio out on the ground and I looked at it and I go, oh crap, I'm a beauty photographer, not a fashion photographer. So what I did is I decided I had to actually build a portfolio that checked the boxes for beauty. So I analyzed the beauty community is active on Instagram with certain hashtags. And I see that a lot of times they're using really clean, strong, bold uh, imagery, but not with crazy color or crazy makeup. So I need some cleaner imagery to attract them. So what I did is I went ahead and my strategy was to shoot new portfolio, target skincare brands, 
analyze what their brands are looking for, and then use the hashtags and work with artists that are working with those brands. Um, I think it took me about a year to work on this strategy before I actually saw a turnaround of it turning into clients. So now these are the type of images I shot after analyzing my goal, my target clients, how my style fit with the type of imagery they wanted. So, all right, so this is uh, how I would approach this when you're going home here. Uh, realize that if you're just shooting what comes your way, it's not a viable path forward to success in your future. You have to actually analyze what you enjoy, what you find fulfilling, what your target clients are, produce images for that, develop a strategy, analyze that strategy, and see if it's working. It sounds like a lot of work, but the easiest way to do this is just put four days a month on your calendar. I don't, like, it sounds like a lot, but it's your business success. Four days a month, block it off. Maybe two are for shooting, two are for marketing, and for analyzing your success. So when people ask me how I'm doing it all, it's that. It's setting time aside to be deliberate. So guys, I can tell that they're kicking us out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off stage. I'll stand right over here if you have any questions. And then when they actually kick me out, we can go outside. <laughs> All right? Thank you, guys. I hope you had a wonderful WPPI.